Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now today is a little bit different because instead of a, a Sunday recipe, I'm going to do a bit of an update as to what's been happening in the world of Food Tech 101. Now there's a lot to, to update you on, including all the things that we've got coming up on Food Tech 101 soon. But first of all, I want to give a big thank you to all the Food Tech 101 supporters. We started producing videos just a few months ago uh, in July, uh, end of July, August, and in just a couple of short months we've gone from a channel with zero subscribers to almost 250 subscribers. Well on our, well on our way to making our first 1,000 subs. So thank you to all you subscribers. Much love from me to you. I really do appreciate your support. Okay, so what's happening next in Food Tech 101? Well, I've got a long list of really exciting things, exciting recipes and exciting things I want to do with the Food Tech 1 channel moving forward. So I'm just going to go through a list of different things. And at any point, uh, I really want you to uh, comment on the different ideas I put forward, the things you like, uh, the things you're looking forward to. So we make this a bit of a discourse. Any special recipes or things in particular you, you would like to see um, on the channel, then uh, any plant-based stuff in particular, then drop me a comment and I'll see how I can accommodate a dish you put forward and also give you a shout out in the process. Alright, so here we go. Um, first up, things to make in Food Tech 101 going forward in 2018, 19. Uh, one of the big things I want to really try and make, and um, I've got a list here, I want to do, I want to make some vegan barbecue ribs. Yes, you heard me. Vegan barbecue ribs. Now, I've got a bunch of hardcore um, meat eating uh, teacher friends at school that the idea of vegan barbecue ribs just makes them laugh but in my mind I think using plant-based materials I can make uh, vegan I'm gonna make put come together a recipe to make vegan barbecue ribs that even has wait for it vegan bones you heard me vegan barbecue ribs with vegan bones I want them to look like meat smell like meat taste like meat with bones that if you weren't told you'd think were meat now I've got an idea of how to do it in my head I'm going to have to do some working out before I get that, that one out. But that's the first one I'm really excited about. Um, vegan barbecue ribs. In addition, uh, next, I also want to complete all the practicals that I'm going to be doing uh, for Year 7 and Year 8. Initially, Food Tech 101 was set up to um, have a, a video demonstration of all the practicals I do with my students at school. Now, the practicals I do with my students at school are great for the students at school also the practicals for anybody so the parents can look at them and, and make dishes and anybody else wanting to make stuff they can make stuff from them, them as well but my initial motivation <coughs> was to produce um, learning material for my students initially before and after that then just whatever exciting things I can think to make so the next step I want to create finish creating all the the, the practicals for my year uh, 8 and year 9. All the year 7 practicals are already in there, all the dishes for that. But I've got some year 8 and year 9 stuff to make. Um, so I want to be able to make sure I get that done. Uh, we also now have Food Tech 101 recipe booklets. Uh, these are ones I use initially in school with my class. I give them a free booklet with the recipes on. But I'm going to be making some available. I'm going to make some a series of re mini recipe books uh, that will be available on PDF or a, a digital book that anyone can, can just download for free. Um, so pair anyone else watching the show they can download and get a whole bunch of uh, interesting recipes um, with a little bit of technical information behind them so they can just uh, have this vi this um, electronic copy at home themselves completely free so that's my that's one of my goals this year to produce uh, a really nice Food Tech 101 booklet a uh, little mini recipe booklet with all the recipes we've done so far plus a few more special things besides so that's something I'm really looking forward to uh, next thing I want to make I next I would like to make a vegan Sunday roast. One of the things with, with people who are transitioning from meeting, eating meat to eating vegetarian is not so much that they don't like meat, but for many people it could be um, they could be choosing to eat meat for ethical reasons, or for moral reasons, or for spiritual reasons, or for religious reasons. But it's, it's very seldom usually because they don't like the taste of meat in most cases, or they're allergic to meat. I don't know anyone that's actually allergic to meat. So in, in many cases it's health benefits. Um, so the idea of being able to, to take a plant-based product and make it look, smell and taste like meat, apart from anything else, it makes it more inclusive for that individual in their family. So if the family is sitting down to have a Sunday roast and they have something on the table that looks, smells and tastes like a roast, like a, a full roast wrapped up with a string 
with a with what looks like the, the bit of fat on it, and you and you you cut it and it's succulent and it smells and tastes and cuts like meat and looks like meat and tastes like meat, then the whole family can get around that and have a and have a completely vegan Sunday Sunday lunch and not really miss the meat. And those few people that may be vegetarian or even vegan can be completely included in that. So that's part of the idea to make something that looks, smells and tastes exactly, or as near to, exactly as me. Now I've got a pretty good idea how to do that. I've got some ingredients and some methods that I'm really excited about trying out. So um, that's the next thing I want to make. Uh, it's going to take some planning, but I want to make a vegan Sunday roll. So I'm doing a, a vegan Sunday lunch. So the, the, full, the full shebang, the roast potatoes, the gravy, um, the veg, and of course the uh, pièce de résistance, the Sunday roast. So that's going to be a target that I want to do within the next few weeks, a vegan Sunday roast. Sticking with the theme of uh, meat, uh, popular meat to vegan type dishes, uh, I've got a recipe in my head as well of how to make a vegan Big Mac. Now, it's just exciting. I mean, you could obviously just have a Big Mac. I mean, there's nothing wrong, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that as such. You know, cows have to die, but that's not, that's not the point. But I've got, I think I've got a recipe in my mind of how I can make a vegan um, Big Mac. So it, again, my, my my goal with this with these particular dishes are to make something that looks, smells, and even tastes just like an actual Big Mac. So you're eating, you're tasting, you're thinking this tastes and looks and smells like a Big Mac, but you're completely plant based. Now there are lots of benefits to having plant based alternatives, apart from the fact that no animals have to die. Uh, believe it or not, one of the biggest causes of uh, pollution on the planet is not the the the, the fumes from cars. But it's actually the fumes from the fumes coming out of animals, the gas coming out of uh, out of animals that we rear uh, for meat is one of the biggest causes of uh, of damage to the planet, bar none. I think they say every week or even more than that, uh, a, a football pitch worth of of, um, of rainforest every day is is reduced because it's made, been made way for for more um, animal rearing. And the gas that comes out of them causes more damage to the to the ozone layer and to the planet than the, than what comes out of cars. So there's a good reason for us to to turn from meat uh, to vegetable-based um, alternatives. And that's just not me saying. This is something that was on the news more recently, trying to encourage people to eat less meat for the sake of the planet itself. So there are lots of good reasons, apart from health-based reasons or ethical-based reasons, to be looking for uh, looking at plant-based alternatives. So if we can make plant-based alternatives that look, smell, taste very much like meat, realistically so, and convincing enough to even convince some of the hardcore meat eaters. Now, you know we've got some proper hardcore meat eaters. If we could, if I can make something that's convincing enough so when they eat it, they think, this tastes pretty much like meat, looks, smells, tastes, then that's, a, that's something which could potentially have worldwide impact, for real. Something else uh, I'd like to do, I'd like to show you how to make uh, West Indian or Caribbean bun. Now, Caribbean bun is very different than what we call an English bun, which is like a you know, like hot cross bun, that kind of thing we get around about Easter time. Uh, the Caribbean bun is a different kind of bun altogether. It's a little denser, it's, it's dark in colour, it's got spices in, all spices, different things. So I've got a few recipes to do, um, to make a, a Caribbean West Indian bun, but using slightly different flavours. So I've got, a, I've got a few ideas I've tried before that would be nice to share of how to make a Caribbean or a West Indian um, bun. Now, typically speaking, traditionally, that is had with bun and cheese, but I'm going to show, um, I'm going to make a, a vegan version of both. Uh, a Caribbean bun with vegan cheese. Uh, so I'm sure it's convincing enough so even the hardcore Caribbean people, such as myself, um, would be happy with that as an alternative. Keeping in, in the same theme with our junk food recipe type dishes, um, I want to make some vegan KFC. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way with vegan everything. I've seen a really nice recipe uh, of how to make vegan KFC, which should looks again. Look, my aim really with this, I mean, I don't really eat meat so much now, um, but I remember eating meat and I do like the taste of it. Um, so one of the holy grails of veganism, so to speak, is to create, in, in a sense, is to be able to create um, plant-based products that look, smell, and taste like meat. So that's one of my personal goals, and I do remember what meat tastes like. So I want to be able to make um, some vegan KFC. Um, that looks, smells, texture-wise, taste, crunch, everything looks, smells, and tastes like KFC. Now I've got some really exciting ingredients from different organisations, different companies, uh, to help me achieve that particular goal. So that's a vegan KFC. One of the things we already, we've already made so far, when we're looking at our series between aquafaba versus eggs, um, we've looked at a couple of things to do that so far. And one of the things we've looked at is um, aquafaba meringues versus egg-based meringues. We've already got that video out there. 
But uh, to keeping on with that similar theme, I'm going to make some aquafaba macarons. Now, macarons are a really tricky thing, even to make with eggs. So the idea of making some really pretty, tasty macarons with aquafaba, so anyone who, who for whatever reason, can't eat eggs, or is allergic to eggs, or is trying to go vegan, then you can have... The idea is to have some a lot of your favourite dishes, but maybe the alternatives in such a way that you can still have some of your favourite foods, but just maybe different ingredients. Uh, I've done, so far, on the channel, we've done one um, very simple oat-based cookies, very simple. Uh, they're, they're a dish which, which um, I make with my year seven class, um, but it's a slightly more technical dish, which is the Millie's cookies. Now, Millie's cookies are soft and and chewy and flexible, um, and partly the way to achieve that is with the egg that's used. But I'm gonna try and make some vegan-based Millie's cookies. That, that should be quite exciting. I'm gonna be using aquafaba uh, as an egg replacement um, to help uh, also include that flexibility. So I'm gonna make some vegan Millie's cookies. I'm gonna try and make a little bit healthy as well, maybe make some with brown flour instead of white flour, and then um, use soft brown sugar instead of the casa sugar. So, my aim is to make some really nice, soft, chewy, vegan Millie's cookies. That's coming up soon as well. Now this one's maybe a little bit further down the line because I've got to work out exactly how to do that. Uh, I want to make a, a vegan stuffed turkey. Now, I had some something, like, I remember a few years ago I was in Canada, I had something what someone called vegan stuffed turkey and it was just stuff shaped into the shape of a turkey. It tastes nothing like a turkey. Um, and I wasn't really overly, overly impressed with that myself. Um, but I, I think if I could make a vegan turkey, I think once once I once I do the um, the vegan spare ribs and I've got my head around the vegan bones, I, I think that'd be an exciting way to be able to do a vegan turkey because you really you just in essence you, you're constructing the the mechanics of of the turkey and then wrapping um, a, a plant based meat substance around it. So that's something that I'm gonna have to do some working out for that one. That's not an easy one to do that. That, that may come maybe six months or a year from now. I'll do the vegan turkey thing. Um, that may be a bit, a bit more difficult. I can get the flavour, but it might be more challenging to get something that looks like a like an actual bird on, on, a, on, a, on a plate. So that's that's some way down the line. <laughs> we may get to that, but that's a bit tricky, that one. Yep, uh, one of the things I want to do, uh, I want to do a, a bed, bed, a bread masterclass. I call it masterclass, I mean, who am I? Not master. Um, but uh, w one of the things I want to introduce uh, is um, the best of both breads. Uh, something that was introduced, I remember a few years ago, Holbis did these, what they call best of both. Uh, so I want to show how you can make a best of both bread. That means you get the soft, um, fluffy texture of strong white flour, but with all the fiber and the, and the germ from the wholemeal, wholemeal flour, the best of both. So I've got a recipe to make the best of both bread. So you'll be able to get the, uh, all the, the taste of one, but with uh, the added fiber and, and uh, another germ of, of the wholemeal. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna show you how to do the best of both. That'll, that'll come up pretty soon, that's pretty easy to do. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, this is an exciting one, number 13, number four. We've got, we've got a long list of stuff to do, guys, I'm really excited. So next uh, next up, we've got, um, I'm gonna do a series on the best food hacks on YouTube. Now, um, there's loads of food hacks uh, all, all over the place. Um, and there's some Russian guys, some other guys doing lots of different types of food hacks. I'm gonna take the best of the food hacks and each month I'm going to do a series looking at the best of the food hacks and see if they actually do work. So I'll go for the best of the food hacks, try it myself and say, does this food hack work or is it just a blank? So I'm going to do um, top 10 food hacks, I'm going to do a different top 10 every month. So that should be something that's, that's quite fun to do. I'll try and do one before the end of the month, which we've only got a couple of weeks, so I'm not quite sure. But try and do one before the end of the month. That's the best food hacks on YouTube. Some of the things I've got on my list I've already done. Vegan mayonnaise, piece of cake, we've already got that video. Really simple, you can make vegan mayonnaise in about two minutes yeah and it looks smells and tastes like 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 regular regular mayonnaise so that's the good thing and it's really cheap and really easy to make yeah so a vegan mayonnaise that's that's one that's already up there so you can go and check that one out now again our vegan pulled pork we've already done that so you can go and check out how to make vegan pulled pork we've already got the recipe up there so some of the things I've got on my list we've already done um, what we've got next ah the next one I want to make and uh, for hopefully within the next couple of weeks for all you lovers of, of West Indian food, I'm gonna make a vegan um, curry goat. A curry goat is a traditional Caribbean dish. I usually have curry goat um, with rice or rice and peas. So I think I'll be able to, I'm gonna try and do a vegan version of that. Show you how to make the rice and peas, because rice and peas, despite what Jamie, Jamie Oliver might think, is not rice with green peas in it. Rice and peas is a particular Caribbean dish um, with seasonings and spices and different and coconut and different things. and and you can use different types of peas, some people use conga peas or uh, even black eyed peas, but it's not 
um, rice with green beans in it, with green peas in it. It's quite, it's a particular recipe in of itself. There isn't, there is not one way to make it. That's, people make it lots of different ways, using lots of different types of rices. My, my wife has a, a fantastic recipe that I'm looking forward to, to sharing with you. That's a, that's a rice and peas followed by um, a vegan curry goal, and that's going to be a really tasty dish that, that you that you'll love to give that a try. Yeah, uh, again, I want to make a vegan. This vegan's going to feature behind a lot of this because there are already a million recipes of how to make the meat based the meat based version of a lot of these these dishes. So there's no there's no big deal with that. So I'm excited about making vegan alternatives. So I'm going to make a vegan meat and potato pie that's going to have that like the, the almost the suety type of um, type of pastry on the outside with chunky meat and potato filling, but totally vegan. Yeah, that that one I know I can definitely do. So I'm going to make that and then try it out on some of my real hardcore meat eaters to see the pattern their test and he passes their test then we know we've got we've got a, a bit of a special product there but yeah uh, a vegan a meat and potato pie that's coming up uh, a quick and easy one this this is a uh, uh, baked beans three ways uh, the idea of being able to take a quite a simple common ingredient like baked beans and see how I can do it in lots of different ways so I'm gonna uh, that's one particular dish I'm gonna do vegan three um, baked beans three ways yeah so the, the three dishes we're gonna make I'm gonna make a cheesy uh, bean uh, pasta, pasty. Uh, you can get them from Greg's actually. I'll show you how to make that cheesy bean pasty. I'll show you how to make the pastry or show you how to make it with a standard component, which such as, as puff pastry. Really easy, really quick to make. You can also make a bean cobbler, which is like uh, beans on the bottom with like a pastry, like a, a half scone type pastry uh, 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 topping. And, and the final way is using baked beans as your base to make um, a pasta sauce. You can take so many things and make them so and change them up so easily. So I'm going to show you how I can, I can make a, a pasta, a really super quick, easy pasta sauce, just using baked beans and some other ingredients, and that within about I don't know, a matter of seconds, you got a, you got a ready-made, uh, really tasty pasta sauce. You can just pour in your pasta, cook, have an easy uh, easy pasta dish or a pasta bake. That's so baked beans three ways. That's an exciting, easy, quick, cheap one. That's going, to, that's going to come up soon. Now you'll look forward to that. That'll be a good one to make, especially for all you students out there who are living on beans. At least if you're going to live on beans, we can show you how to have it in a few more interesting, and exciting ways. Ah, yes, this is something I want to do before Christmas. Once I've made, I'm uh, showing you how to make um, vegan spare ribs with vegan bones. Um, uh, before between now and Christmas, um, with, you, with some of the, uh, my fellow teachers at school, I'm going to do a spicy vegan ribs challenge. So that's gonna that's gonna be really a really fun one to watch. So I'm gonna go um, make uh, get my vegan ribs and make them in four gradings or variations of heat. So I think with reasonably spicy up to blow your head off spicy. And I'm gonna have a challenge to get some of the hardcore people who love spice and, and who, who love their ribs, get them in, video them, and and see if anyone can make it through to the blow your head off version at the end. And that'll be a bit a bit of fun. And we'll make a challenge something like to see if they can have that without having milk or ice cream to cool their mouth down. So that'll be a bit of fun there, Christmas. Uh, super the super spicy uh, vegan spare ribs challenge. I'm really excited about doing that. That that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, there's some other practical ones I want to do. Um, how to make pasta? Really easy way to to make pasta and how to use a pasta machine. Um, demystifying pasta is one thing I want to do because uh, when you see people making pasta, you see Italians making pasta, it seems like such a complicated process, and but it really is quite simple. 99% of the pastas that you buy in the shop, the dry pastas, have literally virtually one ingredient wheat. The water's already evaporated out of it, so there isn't even any water in it anymore. It's just wheat. They don't have salt, they don't have sugar, they don't have any eggs in them. The majority of them just have durum wheat. So it must be pretty easy to make uh, pasta if you get the right flour and just add water, get the right consistency. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make pasta even without an egg. So it'll be completely vegan pasta, as most pasta it usually is. Uh, and some other variations to that as well. I think Jamie Oliver's got a really interesting recipe using spinach, which I would like to share with you. Really exciting one that I had my doubts, but that, but that boy Jamie, he can cook. He's got some skills. I'll give, I'll give him his juice. I've tried, I've made some of his dishes and you know what, they're well tasty. So. Uh, I'll give him his dues. He, he knows the way around the kitchen, as you would expect. Um, so I'm going to share uh, one of one of the dishes that I got from from off one of his websites. Really exciting! How to make uh, spinach pasta? It's really quick as well. And you get this really really vibrant green pasta, and you can do all kind of variations with it. So that's that's a really interesting one I want to do. Okay, yeah. And the final thing I, I want to want to talk about, share with you, is the fact that um, a lot of people have been asking me about merch. Now, when they started asking me about merch, I didn't know what merch was. So what, what, what is merch? They meant merchandising. 
So uh, I'm going to share with you uh, over the next few weeks uh, some designs that I'm putting together to have some get some merch. I'm going to start off with some Futek, some cool Futek 101 teachers, teachers t-shirts, and then maybe go to some some caps, maybe some hoodies, some tops. So. I'm really excited about the idea of getting some merchandise, taking our Futa One logo, that thing that's you can see in the background there. Getting our Futa 101 logo um, and see if we can put it on some merchandise in, in a really cool kind of way. So I'm excited about um, about doing that. And if I get a chance, I'll share uh, some of the potential images um, in, in, in this very video when I edit it and put it together. So there we have it. That's my rundown of the things that are going to take us probably over the next uh, six months to do all the things on that video, but it's, it's really exciting times. Uh, lots of people uh, are getting in contact with me, different organizations want to, want to work uh, with Foodtech 101, different people have contacted me want to work with Foodtech 101. There's one more thing which I almost forgot. One of, the, one of the companies that have contacted me that really want to get involved in Foodtech 101 is a company called Kingdom Fitness. And this is this opens up a really really exciting avenue because what we start looking at is superfoods, um, superfoods. So it's the the heat uh, superfoods and the healing power of superfoods. Now there's a whole range of foods which have tremendous properties for our body, which I'd like to share with you um, in a, in a series um, which is probably going to cost some life. Superfoods 101, and it will be the countdown of the top uh, 100 superfoods in the world. Uh, what they are what their claimed use is for the body. I'll have some to demonstrate. I'll, I'll try some on, my, on myself. And I'll be able to learn really about uh, the pharmacy we have in our own kitchens by way of uh, the healing benefits of, of our food. I think it was Hippocrates that says, let, let your uh, food be a medicine and your medicine be your food. So we're gonna learn about the healing properties uh, of the foods that we eat. And we're gonna look at the do a countdown uh, using the top 100 superfoods and that's going to be the information going to be provided by uh, Kingdom Fitness. And there's a top, there's a top guy there called Jay, who's very, very knowledgeable, and uh, he's, he's going to help me uh, put the information together to share that information with you. So I'm really looking forward to doing this a whole series on on superfoods, and I think that's going to blow your mind. Um, and I'm really excited about about doing that. Uh, so there we have it. That's the rundown for about probably the next six months on Food Tech 101. It's exciting times. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Food Tech 101 is now available on uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we have our uh, we have our email, which is admin at foodtech101.co.uk. So if you if anyone's watching has any business ideas or want to do any collaborations, uh, you can always contact me via that. And this is an exciting time to be part of Food Tech 101. So once again, thank you all you uh, faithful subscribers. Uh, don't forget to comment to let me know which one of these things coming up you're most excited about. I'd lo love to hit, get your feedback. Anyone who, come out, co anyone who comments, I'll always give you a shout out. And the, our future for Food at 101 is very, very bright. We're at about 250, just under 250 subscribers at the moment. But let's see if we can tell our friends, our friends' friends, get our parents on there. And let's see if we can crank it up to, to get our first 1,000 subscribers. Let's make... Uh, with your help, I believe we can make Food Tech 101 one of the most exciting food channels on the whole of the internet. Uh, and with your feedback, I think that's a, that's a really possibility. So once again, thank you all of you, all you guys who've subscribed, who've, who've taken our Food Tech 101 from scratch just a few months ago to a thriving uh, YouTube channel. That's all up to you. So thank you for, for me to you. Thank you very much. As always, my name is Mr. Lightbird. All together, well, you can call me sir. Of things we know